All right, greetings. Today we're going to be doing uh, Unit 4.2. Some people would call these kind of like a Newton's first law problems, but anyway, this will just be some applications of Newton's laws. What we're going to be looking at today are problems that are static. A uh, problem that's static just means the sum of the forces on there are equal to zero. Matter of fact, we can say that the sum of the forces in the x direction are zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. And this is known as the first condition for static equilibrium is what we've got right here. Later on, we'll take a look at the second condition for static equilibrium, and that's when the sum of all the torques are equal to zero on an object. Anyway, uh, easiest way to get into this one is just go straight into doing some of the problems. A lot of times we call these stoplight problems. Uh, and I guess the reason why we call them stoplight problems is just because this very first problem that we work in class just so happens to be a traffic light. So anyway, we've got a traffic light hanging from two cables, and the problem tells us how heavy the traffic light is, and then it asks us to find the tension in each of the two cables of the light. So again, this is like your most basic kind of uh, question here. So we'll start off with what we call a free body diagram. Free body diagrams, you're going to see a lot of them throughout the course. So you do need to get pretty good at drawing them. Something like an AP exam would definitely want you doing free body diagrams. In this problem, we've got a 100 Newton force, which is the weight uh, directed straight down in the negative y axis. We have also got a cable up and to the right, excuse me, at, we'll call it tension two, at an angle of 53 degrees. So there's one cable, and then we have a second cable, a little bit less of an angle on it, 37 degrees. So we've got a second cable that we'll call that cable T1, an angle of 37 degrees. All right, so this is your free body diagram for that stoplight problem. Uh, after you get your free body, the second thing to do in any of these problems is going to be to do a sum of the forces X and a sum of the forces Y. And this is why you learn how to do those hiker in the woods questions, those vector problems earlier. Sum of the forces X would be equal to. I like to find all my positive X components first. So my only positive is this T2 has a positive x component because it's x and I'm off the x-axis. I'll use cosine. So I'll say T2 cosine of 53. And then the 100 has no x component. The T1 has an x component, but it's in a negative direction. So I'm going to write minus T1 cosine of 37, and if this thing is static, then all these forces should be equal to zero. Some of the forces Y, the T2 has a Y component, and I'll use sine to get it. So we've got T2 sine 53. The T1 also has a positive Y component, so we will add T1 sine 37, this 100 is directed in a negative direction, so I'll write minus 100 and set that all equal to zero in this case. The only thing that changes from this problem to unit 4.3 with the connected objects is in this, these problems, your sum of the forces are both equal to zero. When you get to the connected object problems, one of these two will be equal to an MA on those problems. All right, believe it or not, the physics is over. Uh, that was it for the physics in this problem. Uh, the rest of this problem is going to be math. Now, if you're getting scared about the math in this one confusing you, let's take a second and kind of break it down. The math in this is going to be the same math you've seen in math class. Like if you saw 2x plus 4y equals 0, and let's say maybe 10x plus 8y minus 12 equals 0. Now, there's different ways of doing this in math class. 
the math teacher might teach you to multiply the top equation by negative 5 and have negative 10x so that that cancels, uh, negative 20y so that's 12, and have you do the problem this way. That's not practical in physics for the way we do it. So what we're going to do is this. We'll take the simplest equation and we'll solve it for one of the two variables. So in this case, I'll set 2x equal to negative 4y. And then I'll divide by 2 and have x equals negative 2y. Once I've solved one of the two equations for one of the variables, I'll then take that variable and plug it back into the other equation. So now I'll have 10 times negative 2y plus 8y. I'm going to go ahead and add the 12 to the other side just to make it look better. So it equals 12. So this becomes negative 20y plus 8y equals 12. And this would be negative 20 plus 8, which would be negative 12y equals 12. So y would be equal to negative 1. And that's how we do the math on this problem. The math we're about to do is the exact same as this basic 7th grade algebra question. So take a look at this. Take the simpler of the two equations, which is the first one, and let's solve it for T2. So T2 cosine of 53 would be equal to, add T1 to the other side, T1 cosine of 37. Now divide both sides by cosine of 53. And we'll plug that into our calculator. Cosine 37 divided by cosine 53, 1.32. So T2 is equal to T1, 1.32. Now, it looks a little odd having it written this way. So what I'm going to do is just so it looks more like math. Like in math how we have x is equal to negative 2y. We're just going to do this. T2 is equal to 1.32 T1. And this way it looks a little bit more like we're familiar in math class just by trading the places of those two terms. Now that we've solved for T2, though, we can bring it right back up, plug it into the second equation. And this is where, you know, students have their hard time with physics a lot of times. Their math grounds are a little lacking. So you can do the physics, which was just the two sums of forces. The rest of this problem is just an algebra question. So this would become, in place of T2, we would have 1.32 T1 times sine 53 plus T1 sine 37. I'm going to go ahead and add the 100 to the other side. Equals 100. Let's do a little bit more math here. 1.32 times the sine of 53. So this is 1.05. So this is 1.05 T1. Now, we'll take the sine of 37 which is 0 0.6, so this would be plus 0 0.6 T1 equals 100. So all I did was take the sine of 37 and I slid it over here in front of the T1 variable. So I'm going to have 1.65 T1 equals 100. So now we'll go 100 divided by 1.65 60.6. So T1 is equal to 60.6 newtons. Now if we would like to find our value for T2, we can come right back up here and go 1.32 times 60.6 newtons times 1.32 and we've got an even number 80. 
So there's our answers to this question. T2 is 80. T1 is 60.6 newtons. All right. So that is your basic sum of the forces question, your basic stop lock question. Uh, how the stop lock questions will change, I'll go ahead and give you a quick rundown on that as well. Your basic stop lock is going to be a problem like we just worked. So if we do our free body diagram, you've got some angle here, you've got some angle here, and you've got something, usually a weight perhaps directed straight down like an MG. All right, this one's got two different angles. Now, I'll give you a hint. If you work a problem and it's like this, we'll say theta 1, theta 2. If you work a problem and theta 1 and theta 2 are the same value, I'll go and give you a hint. There isn't a T1 and T2. If the angles are the same, then the tensions are the exact same. So there's no T1 and T2. These problems become very easy once you have them done because the two tensions are the same. It makes the algebra very easy. Another easy way they'll try and do these, and this would be your like third example here. Sometimes you'll work on these problems and it'll look like this. You'll have a tension, T1, at some angle theta. You'll have an MG, probably an MG down. And they'll do this. They'll set the other cable perfectly horizontal. What makes this so handy with this cable horizontal is this. When you go to do your sum of the forces X, you would have T1 cosine theta, and now look at this. You can just go minus T2 equals zero. So some of the forces Y would now just be T1 sine theta minus MG. So if the problem gave you MG like 100 and it gave you an angle of 30, you'd already know that T1 is 200. You could work it that fast. And then once you know that, you could plug it back up of here. T2 would be 86.6. So it really makes the problem easy at this point because there is no math. You can go ahead and solve an answer for T1 and then plug that answer in up here. So that's what makes these. A lot of times on tests, professors will give you these just because they're so much quicker to work. All right, let's do my second example, and that's going to be where uh, we stop on doing these sums of forces equals zero questions. The uh, second question I have is a child holding a sled on a hill. And we do need to do this one so that you're familiar with the way this works when you're on a hillside like this. So I'm going to start off by drawing my hillside. So there's my hill. I'm going to draw a dot that represents the sled. Now there is a child holding the sled on the hill. So we've got a tension or force drawn straight up the hill. Uh, matter of fact, let's just call it the force in this one because we'll do it like that. All right. Now, two things you haven't learned yet is this. One, weight is always directed straight down. This problem says that the sled weighs 77. So we'll draw an arrow straight down, and I'll say that mg is equal to 77 newtons. Now, one of the things you might as well notice about your following this video series is that, like, I usually don't write weight is equal to 77. I use mg knowing that it represents weight. When I work problems with friction, very rarely do I ever write, like, a little f for friction. If there's a friction, I'll draw an arrow and just write a mu n like that after it. But anyway, so back to this problem. There's one more force missing in this question, and that's what's known as a normal force. 
The normal force is the reaction force, Newton's third law. For every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Well, if this sled is sitting on top of a hill, then the hill is pushing back against the sled at a 90-degree angle, which is where the word normal comes from. So this is your normal. So we've got a force. We've got a weight. We've got a normal. Now, I don't want to draw my free body diagram at an angle on this hill. So what I'm going to end up doing is tilting it this way. So I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. So I'm going to turn the picture like this. And when you do this, I want you to look. The MG is back in an angle. The normal force is straight up on my y-axis. The F is straight on my x-axis. So in this picture, I've got a normal force here, which is at 90 degrees to the force of this child. And I've got a weight that's back and to an angle. And I already know that that weight is 77. Now, here's a little neat bit of trig for you. When you work these problems with hillsides, use a little common sense. Whatever angle the bottom of the hill is, this angle up here would be theta minus 90 or 90 minus theta. So an angle of 90 minus theta up at the top which means that this angle here must be theta. So this angle and this angle are the same angle. So I can come in here, put a theta. Now, I could figure out this other angle, but it's no big deal. I'm going to stick to the, using this theta. The only catch is, since I'm taking theta off of a y-axis, my sines and cosines are going to be what? If you said reversed, you got the right answer. So since I'm using the y-axis, uh, my sums of forces x's would use sines, and my sums of the forces y would use a cosine since I'm using this axis. Um, let's see, this hill is at an angle of 30 degrees in this question. It says, so I'm going to do my sum of the forces. Sum the force is x, and again, this angle is 30. Sum the force is x would be equal to, we've got an f straight to the right, minus this mg, which is directed back this way, and instead of 77 cosine 30, like normal, since I'm coming from the y-axis, I'm going to reverse that and use sine. So this would be 77 sine 30 equals zero. Did you have to do it this way? Nope. You could have said, well, if that's 30, then this is 60, and did the cosine of 60 if you'd wanted to. But I do have a reason for working it like this that you'll see later. Sum of the forces y would be equal to, see if we can get this value here. Uh, we've got n directed straight up n and then minus 77 cosine 30 was zero. This question just asks us to find the force of the child holding the sled. Well, that's going to be easy. F would be equal to 77 sine 30. Sine of 30 is a half. So all you'd have to do is 77 times a half and 38 and a half is your answer. And there's your answer for force. If you want normal force, it'd just be 77 cosine of 30 would be your normal force. So that's kind of how easy that question is. All right. Uh, at this point, you can go ahead and get started doing any of the problems that look like this. Anyway, well, hopefully not like that. But anyway, I will talk to you later.